Hello everyone. I have prepared for you today the explanation of eternity. And that I feel that I can improve the validity of eternity as going on forever, as being found within the presence of God, and that it also travels inward and definitely and not outward. Before I start, I want to also explain to you what this piece of paper is going to explain. It explains quantum physics, the unified wave field theory, the holographic universe, and also what you might know as the Holy Ghost, which I like to call the infinite spirit, which pervades all space. So in saying that the infinite spirit pervades all space, that instantly connects the spiritual reality to the unified wave field theory, the holographic universe, and even quantum physics. I'm not going to explain the details of all those camps of scientific thought. I'm going to leave that up to any physicists or mathematicians that happen to run across this video. And I'd, I'd like you to know that I offer this to the world. This is an original idea. This is an original thought that comes from within me that I believe that has been inspired by the spirit of truth. So this piece of paper here is going to explain for us eternity. And in so doing, it explains all of those camps of thought and then more that are yet to spring up. First off, I'd like to let you be aware of that there is there is a difficulty of explaining infinity in the scientific world. As, as far as I know of, no one has yet to achieve that mathematical theory incomplete, being that that theory is completed. Those theories are still going on. What I believe is that this does, this does explain eternity. This does give the mathematical theory, and it does give it in a complete fashion. But at the very same time, it connects it intimately with the understanding of the Father of all, which is the sole originator of all of these universes of time and space. So in saying that, I know you're kind of anxious to see what we got going on here. So first off, I want you to see what the piece of paper represents. And the paper represents the four dimensions. And we have length, width, height is the thickness of the paper, and then time, where the paper exists. I'd like to explain to you first what what a fold is and that's what you hear in the Bible where it says God will give you many fold more for doing his will over your own so first off we have to understand what a fold is and a fold is anything half of itself so to explore the many fold theory and give it an explanation of what it actually means the piece of paper can also do this and that's where we'll start so one fold is anything half of itself. So we fold the paper in half one time. Now we fold two, and then we fold three. And we're gonna keep on going for, fold is anything half of itself, five, Six. Now I want you to notice that something has happened. And remember, we're dealing with these 
four dimensions, these physical dimensions that are bound to physical laws. Well, as you see, we only got six fold. Now, there is a seventh fold, but we cannot achieve that in perfection. As God has already stated, we are limited here in our perfection capacity as being physical, incomplete beings. So the sixth fold can be achieved, but it, as you saw, that it was still achieved with some difficulty, but the level of perfection cannot be obtained here in these four dimensions and the paper clearly shows that but as you know God says that he will give unto you many fold for doing his will above your own so to figure out what the many fold is we begin to unfold the paper and I want you to notice the size of the paper and each square that we open the first fold now we're instantly given two more than what we had before on the next opening, that 2 is multiplied by 4. And then on the next opening, that 4 is now 8. And as we go and open up the folds one by one, we see that we have received many more fold. And that each one of these squares that you see is the same size as the original state of being. So that clears up the fold for us right there. And then believe it or not, it clears up also a lot of mystery in the world. It identifies the number seven as being the number of completion in which we are incomplete in this world is why it is uncompletable. But it is the number of perfection in many other ways. And as we can see, the paper clearly identifies that there is nothing after the level seven. That is what you would call the omega, and the alpha is the state where we begin. So I'd like to go on further now and explain to you now the beginning of the understanding of eternity traveling inward forever. And I would like you to visualize that we are actually going inward into space and not outward into space in our search for eternity and you must also first begin to understand that there is a sevenfold level there's a sevenfold being of God and this piece of paper reveals that sevenfold level of understanding and it has everything to do with the universes of time and space it has everything to do with why God is all ever present everywhere at all moments in time. It has everything to do with the understanding that as we go inward, things actually become larger as a result of us becoming smaller. The efficiency of this understanding explains that eternity, if it was to travel outward forever, that it would eventually exhaust the power in which propels it in that direction. The only logical answer is that things use what they already have and that they travel inward on infinitely, indefinitely, forever. And that is the path that we will all take as we travel inward unto the Father sevenfold. This is our state of being now. This is where we are on the outside. We're not on the inside now, my friends. We're on the outside. So as we begin to explore the successive levels of God the sevenfold and open ourselves up from one successive journey to the next, traveling ever inward to the Father of all that is, we begin to see that the fold takes on a higher meaning. Now not only are we given more of what we already had in equal amounts, but also more time and space infinitely opens up to us. Each one of these squares represent the mathematical equation.